right, Gypsy Rose messaged me and everybody's been asking for the screenshots mm -hmm. and what exactly did she say? Mm -hmm. We're going to post the screenshots in between mm -hmm. this. Yes. And we're gonna basically run through kind of what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys can read the screenshots like in between, you can pause it to read it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so first off, when she first emailed me, she stated, Hey, I would like to keep this between you and I. Mm -hmm. um, and then she explained pretty much what was going on. And she knew that I was on the fence about her. And she stated that. Um, she also mentioned uh, that I could discuss the things that she has written, mm -hmm. but she didn't want me to show the physical screenshots of what was being said. So she said, um, I want to clear up the rumors basically about her being pregnant. She says that she's not. Ryan was really sick um, and they went to the hospital. It comes to find out he had bronchitis and, you know, they ended up getting x-ray that if anyone said they heard her checking on a fetus, that that was basically lies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she moves on and says that the reason why she changed her instagram and removed and anderson um because people know her as blanchard so she just really wanted to keep blanchard and she went ahead and made a private account under her married name mm -hmm. she said i wanted to keep the two very separate we now know that that was likely lies because they were having issues and obviously now that we see that they're separated there was a lot of conflict in what she said now wait and when was when did she send this message this to was you? march 13th okay and so she just got separated yes on the first or so right he, correct so what two weeks later right so it just indicates that she was even lying in these messages mm -hmm. and that she was saying that they weren't having issues. They were not going to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. And here you go two weeks later, yeah. there's issues and she's facing a, a divorce. Yeah. So um, she said, you know, she created a private page so that she didn't have to worry about scrutiny for every move that she made that, you know, people would be judging her. She just kind of wanted to do selfies of her dog and you know have her private instagram and kind of just you know be her um but then she says moving on to the topic of rachel so she basically accused her fr best friend rachel from prison and said that you know she only wanted her for money she always referred to, she always stated like i'm gypsy rose's best friend or you know she basically was saying that she was clout chasing for her name mm -hmm. now basically the interaction I've had with Rachel, that's not been what it was. Mm -hmm. And being that Gypsy Rose has lied up until these sentence, sentences, I am led to believe that that was lies as well. Yeah. Uh, so also she moves along and she says that um, she was offended that Rachel went to Fancy and that... Um, you know, her siding with Fancy was something that she felt like they couldn't recover from. Um, and she feels like Rachel used her for money while she was in prison. She was like, she bought her hygiene, she took care of her, all these things, which she may have gotten her those things, but I don't feel like Rachel was using her because Gypsy's always said she's the victim. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if you look in currently, she's saying that Ryan, was allegedly abusive to her and you know she had to leave because she was nervous and this reminded her a lot of her mom and so again she's the victim um and i'm feeling like the boyfriend she has now ken not the boyfriend the friend mm -hmm. um he is mm -hmm. i feel like she's manipulating him the same way she manipulated nicholas Godejan, except ken i don't believe is autistic um, I don't yeah. think that he has any special needs. Yeah. Um, so I don't believe he would do anything like what took place with Nicholas Gorjan. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's the same trend, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so she moves on to say that... Uh, where did she go? So she says that right now... Uh, Okay, so she says, 
Um, I never cheated on, on Ryan with Ken. Ken and I never had a relationship behind Ryan's back. It was just a phone call. Now, granted, was it right, the right thing to do? I don't always make the right decisions, but it was weighing hard on my heart. So fast forward to now, lots of people have their exes on social media. Ken was a very big part of my life and he was my first love. He was my first engagement and we're still on good terms. Do we speak? No, but I'm still close with his mother, yes. Anyway, the point is that I wanted to let you know what was going on between Ken and I. So simply just we follow each other on social media, nothing more, nothing less. Now, I want to be clear, I did speak to Ken via phone on March 4th, which was no, Thursday. Yeah, April. Monday was April 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, no, April 4th. Mm -hmm. Ken himself told me before she messaged me on Facebook, he and Gypsy discussed it so she already lied in that message because nick ken already said this to me on the phone mm -hmm. and i don't think ken did it to be honest and kind of tell on her i think he said it you know because he was just saying what actually happened mm -hmm. but he was saying to me yes her and i discussed you know, her messaging you in basically really cliche, very calm, not really thinking anything of it, not knowing that Gypsy already denied all of that in these texts, right? Yeah. But but I also pointed out before how um, Ken has nothing really on social media, but she made sure to follow him. And how are you being private? What are you following? He, he didn't have anything on his social media pages. So it seemed like right You're making a statement when you didn't really have to if it's not a big deal then it's not a big deal but why are you following a person who has nothing on their social media right now also i want to show you guys this clip about a prediction that i made back on january 8th that she was going to end up either she had already seen ken or she was making arrangements to see him and i believe that she was going to end up leaving Ryan for him. Okay, so a lot of you guys have been asking who is Ken. This is Ken right here, which is Gypsy's ex-fiance. Apparently they were together for a couple of years. He ended up breaking up with her because of the amount of time that she had and he didn't know if he could make it through all that time, supposedly, or allegedly. Um... And I'm guessing in the documentary when she said she spoke to her ex um, three weeks ago from the time Ryan and her were speaking on the phone at that point, this was the ex she was talking about. I'm going to be very honest with you. I would not be surprised if she has seen the ex since she's been out or if she has plans of seeing him. Look, don't shoot the messenger. Okay, I'm just saying, this is my belief. I don't know if it's true or not. I might be completely wrong. But Ken is kind of hot, right? Like, Ken is, I don't know. Ken is looking very Ken-ish. Uh, I don't know. What are y'all's thoughts? Like, this, listen. I know it's coming across as me being messy right now, but I'm not trying to be. I'm just saying this is the tea. Y'all asked who was Ken. I was going to mind my business. I put it in the comments, and then a couple of comments kept saying, who's Ken, who's Ken, who's Ken? Okay, this is Ken, Gypsy's ex-fiance. Now, she moves along, and she says, you know, I asked her, I asked her if what was she comfortable with me discussing, and she said, I'm comfortable with you clearing things up about the talk topic um and i'm not having an affair with ken that's all she wanted to clear up you understand she just said she just told you she's comfortable with you saying x y and z right yeah. now do you remember mm -hmm. we were in austin mm -hmm. when this happened mm -hmm. where 
I had made a post about, okay, they're following each other. I actually think they're seeing each other. Mm -hmm. And she sent me this message shortly after she seen mm -hmm. those videos. Yeah. So obviously I was hitting very close to home. Yeah. And here's the clip mm -hmm. of that video. Yeah. Yep. This is tea time with Nina. I got some tea. I need y'all to sit, take a seat, grab your drinks so we could discuss this. Last night I was on live after posting about Gypsy Rose following her ex Ken that she admitted to cheating with and him following her on TikTok as well. Now, originally, there was a video that I had made back on 11 8 about Ken commenting, and I was saying it wasn't the real Ken. Now, it actually was the real Ken. Okay, so right now, hang on to that information. Just keep following. So I got on live, and everybody kept saying, Someone's in your life, someone's in your life. This was who was in the life. And this is proof that she was, in fact, in the life. Mm -hmm. Now, after doing some research this morning, I find this post. Mm -hmm. This is Ken's mama. Mm -hmm. And Ken is right here in the picture. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on to that, right? Now, Gypsy Rose's new profile picture is this. Look at the comment down here and look who wrote it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, now, look who's a bartender in Dallas, Texas, five hours away from Gypsy. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And are we sure he is in Dallas? Well, if we're unsure, look at this. His mama said her son visited her all the way from Dallas, Texas. Now, also, in Gypsy Rose confession documentary, she admitted that Ken really loved blonde girls. And we notice that she's went blonde recently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did the Barbie video? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And recently started following him, and he recently started following her back. Mm-hmm. All right, but hit the plus sign. Keep following along, because I'm bringing the tea. So now that you guys have seen that clip, tell me what your thoughts are on the fact that she literally said she wanted me to clear up this with Ken. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then she says, also, I'm very disappointed how people have taken what I said about autism and turned it into something that I didn't mean. And maybe I didn't say what I wanted to say correctly. I feel it kind of got very twisted very fast. And please, please, ex I w if you'd let me, please explain to you um, if you want to put it out there, that's fine. So she said, I made a comment. No, that comment I made on YouTube was widely taken out of context. Now, again, like part of the issue with this is that she's not taking accountability and she's blame, blaming the viewers that actually watched the video mm -hmm. and read it that they were misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there's a lot, always a lot of misunderstandings yeah, and always. people never really understand what's going on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She said, I, I, um, I was asked, a question I assumed was talking about Nick. I was trying to explain how autism doesn't absolve him from the crime. I have a cousin with autism and I support the autistic community. I hate that everyone took that and ran with that and I, that I don't support or think autism is real and I do know that. But I was only trying to make a point if someone goes out and commits a crime under any circumstances, manipulation or not, some accountability must be taken under the law. Or else, if autism was an exception to a crime, people would use that as an excusable behavior. That is all I meant. And I said it in a way that seems messed up. My apologies to you and everyone who was offended. I honestly just didn't phrase it the way I meant it. I was only trying to explain how I felt in regards regards to my co-defendant 
who yes has autism but level one now i was not aware that there's a level one a level two, a level two a level three mm -hmm. i do know there's a spectrum but yeah. i and you guys correct me yeah. in the comments if i'm wrong yeah. she was like he was diagnosed a level one who needs very little help to function and the expert testified this during his trial now is that a popular opinion no do i feel bad about Nick being in prison for something that I asked, asked him to do? Absolutely, that weighs on me, but I can't crawl into a ball and cry about it every single day. I need to focus on my own mental health. And as for advocating for him, quite honestly, people advocated for me to get an early release and it wasn't worth a damn because ultimately the court system has the main control, social media doesn't. I'm under strict parole guidelines and when it comes to discussing Nick, I just don't want to say anything or make any moves regarding him because quite honestly, freedom is nice and I don't want to take that for granted. I may not address that. I feel responsible for him being in prison, but that has that's my cross to bear. We both had to walk our journeys separately. And in my interview where I said I didn't testify as a murderer, I really didn't phrase that the right way. What I meant was I'm not gonna walk into a job interview, reach my hand out and shake my interviewer's hand and say, I'm Gypsy the murderer. Let's be clear, Gypsy has never went to a job interview since she's been out. Okay, Gypsy doesn't wanna work, so I don't know what she's speaking of. Mm -hmm. But she said, all I meant was that my past does not define my future. Um, yes, if you have murdered someone, your, your past does definitely affect your future. I don't yeah. care what you say, mm -hmm. that is exactly how people view you as someone that has murdered yeah. someone yeah yeah she said all i meant by um yeah so i said that part already she was like i don't think i phrased it correctly i'm not saying that i'm innocent i'm just i did my time and i think since i've been given a second chance by the court system that should be able to i should be able to get a second chance in the public as well now granted unfortunately i came out of prison and i had to promote a docu-series which i felt like they pushed interviews into the ground and led me into massive exposure so if you listen to that, she didn't take any accountability for the things she said or the things that she did, mm -hmm. because if Gypsy was smart or if she came out with a PR person, they would have led her in the right direction. She should have came out and said, you know what? I don't want to discuss Nicholas or the past. You know, we both have made our mistakes. We're mm -hmm. having to live with them. And I just want to focus on my future. Should have been what she said. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have been a going down the rabbit hole because she opened herself up mm -hmm. to other legal ramifications right and then we talk about how this was kind of getting a message out out to nicholas mm -hmm. yes so mm -hmm. she says the support was nice at first until people started turning on me and i may not say everybody has but has to be pro gypsy or support gypsy but i don't think that my best shot in life is being scrutinized by the public well if you put yourself out there in the public you're going to get public scrutiny mm -hmm. so i just think that that's really bizarre yeah. that she wants the public to fund her lifestyle mm -hmm. but she doesn't want anyone to have anything to say about it that's yeah. a little bizarre to me remember the d is fire Remember, right. And she was that. very vocal about that, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, so, however, she said Lifetime has their own PR and their own agenda for wanting to make their show popular. But I'm on this end doing what's best for myself and advocating for me. I'm going to do I'm going to be doing a video because I signed up to the uh, volunteer with the Habitat for Humanity. And unfortunately, I received an email from them rejecting my offer to volunteer because they don't want me specifically to volunteer. I wrote them back a response and asked them if I may make a significant donation and I have not heard back from them. Now, let's be clear. The Habitat for Humanity is the one that actually gave Gypsy Rose her home, okay? So the home that she unalived her mom in was a Habitat for Humanity home. And she has the audacity to ask them if she can volunteer for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Like when you really think about how wild that is, that's like bizarre. Yeah. However, she's saying she wants to donate. Mm -hmm. Now this is the thing about 
the volunteer work. She obviously did this because her show Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup is getting ready to air. Mm -hmm. She wanted to have this physically on the show that she was volunteering for the Habitat for Humanity and she felt like that would make her look good. Now that they said no, she's saying, can she make a significant donation? Let's be clear, because this would be on Lifetime, she herself wouldn't be making the donation. Lifetime would be making the, no the donation right. and it would be a tax write-off for them mm -hmm. because this is on the show. That is an expense of the show, mm -hmm. right? And so she wasn't even gonna be honest with the fact that it wasn't gonna come out of her pocket. This was gonna be an expense that Lifetime would have taken. Mm -hmm. But we're going to move along. She also said that I wrote them back a response and asked them if I could make a significant donation. I said that already. I have not heard back from them. I'm also making plans to make a donation to Make-A-Wish Foundation. But quite honestly, I would like to talk to someone at the New Orleans location, uh, New Orleans branch. Bring a picture of me when I was on my Make-A-Wish trip and apologize and give them a check. Now, she is saying she wants to bring a picture of her in her wheelchair on this fake trip for disabled kids and give them a check and apologize and she wants to do this in person why because it's going to be filmed that is wild like how mm -hmm. that's, disingenuous is that? that's exactly what i'm sitting here doing every move is to get publicity it's not right genuine. so that was that blew me that blew my mind mm -hmm. Now, um, she also said, I, I also have been doing advo um, advocating for my friend Amelia by means of a project like the Innocence Project, the Will Willow Project, and I also have some very important connections that I've made, all of which I talk about in my new show. I'm doing what I can do to multitask, adjusting to society, dealing with the hate on social media, and trying to navigate this advocation and getting in the connections with getting the connections with people to help me guide me on this journey. It's a lot on my hands and on my plate for someone just getting out of prison. I feel like the world expects me to be some kind of superhero and cure cancer. And if I'm not living up to that, then they hate me, which is understanding that social media is not the real world and it keeps me grounded. So I'm not sitting over here reading every comment that everybody makes about me. I would drive myself insane. I do post some things here and there and I move on. I realized that talk, oh, she realized that she was text misspelling stuff, like her stepmom's name and stuff. She says, but my past does not define my future. Damn, talk to text is what she put. Mm. Now I did let her know that I was on, I, I did understand what she was saying. I'm on my way to work and I wanna put this out there the right way. I'll make a recording tonight. Uh, also, how would you like me to prove that I actually spoke with you? Would you like me to tag you in the video? What are you comfortable with? Okay, so she said basically, you, yes, you can tag me. Thank you so much for listening to me. I had a, I was a little intimidated to contact you because I know you've been on the fence about me and rightfully so. I understand that you have a very complicated past and not everything that I do and say is always right, but I sat on it for a couple of days and I'm like, let me try and explain myself and see how things go. Now, again, ironically, this was after I posted that video about her and Ken. Mm -hmm. So she sat on this for a couple of days. I know for a fact that that is her being dishonest. Uh, that's called manipulation. Mm -hmm. How am I going to turn this around in my favor? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she also says, I hope that after this show is over, I'll be able to live a peaceful life. I'm sure as hell not making millions off my story. I've probably made $200,000 in total from my ebook and our show, which I gave $20,000 to my parents to pay them back, take care of me myself while I was in for taking care of me while I was in prison. I literally just started monetizing on TikTok on February 19th. I made roughly $6,000. Lifetime didn't give me any advice about monetizing my stuff before they took me on a promotion tour, which I'm kicking myself for that now. I said, oh man, yeah, you could have made a lot more money, but Listen, do what's best for you. She's been out in jail four months and she made 2K, 200K. Right. She says, yes, I agree. At least it's a little nest egg so I can buy myself a car and some things because when I came out of prison, I came out with absolutely nothing. I'm still buying clothes and my makeup, which I totally botched that makeup video. My stepmom took me to Ulta. And so she did a video, it was really funny. 
and I stitched the video. Uh, well, I used the voiceover of the video, mm -hmm. and it's actually really comical. Um, then she also goes on to say, this is not public no um, knowledge yet, but I've hired an attorney. And so she's basically saying that Fancy, which is the lady that her and her mom, her stepmom and her have went through some things, this person, it, she's getting ready to serve this person because of all of what's going on with that, with this lady. She basically has used her medical records and done all these kinds of things. And basically she's saying it's a conspiracy, her conspiracy theories and everything. She wants to get a restraining order and all of that. So basically it would be kind of like where this lady couldn't speak on her, speak on her case, anything like that. So, uh, she, I said, oh, okay, whatever she said, it's some extra stuff. We're going to post this all here. Mm -hmm. She also said I had to delete my video. Apparently, my number was uncovered. So I was like, oh, my gosh, did people read out, reach out to you? It was like basically small talk. And then she was like, I, uh, I'm sorry we're getting... She said, I'm sorry that you're getting attacked right now. I feel like everybody wants me to be the big bad wolf and not be a voice of reason. So I apologize if you're getting attacked, but I'm simply putting out what we've talked about. So I said, I don't really care about the comments because if you guys know me, I don't really care about like people bullying me. Like I'm not bothered by that. Mm -hmm. And she, I was, she was like, because uh, I'm also trying to make better choices for myself. I spoke to the Lifetime PR today in a meeting and they strongly wanted me to re um, reactivate my Instagram or let them uh, reactivate it and use it for PR purposes. And I stood my ground and said, that's not what the best option for me. Um, and what's in my best interest is freedom. I get you guys want to promote the series, but that's not your, that's your agenda, not mine, because quite honestly, they could give two F's about everything in their business world that would affect me. So I was like, wow, good for you. Uh, then she was saying about uh, responding to comments on the internet. And I said, yeah, I agree with not responding to comments. It wouldn't benefit you at this point. It would just be an argument in the comment section. However, based on what you've said, I don't think you, I think you've done so, a lot of self-reflection and that kind of humanizes you. She said, I posted the video like five minutes ago. I had to split it up in two videos because my videos were 12 minutes, the video was 12 minutes long. So there's one that's 10 minutes and then another one that's like two minutes and seven seconds. I tried to make my point and giving myself a little grace. Um, I told her I'd watch it in a few, okay? So that was pretty much the gist of this conversation. Now, she also explained the breakdown of how she was getting paid. She said, I wanna clear up some things so I can explain how my documentary is set up. So Lifetime had to give me six episodes in the contract. It states six episodes with the option to do 10 episodes post prison. So that green lit, the additional X amount of episode post prison, it was supposed to be 10. I don't think it will be 10. I'm just really sure they haven't decided how many number of episodes it will be for the show that I'm filming for right now, but it went off of the original prison confessions, confessions contract. So I wasn't able to turn down the additional episodes post prison. So it was something that I had already agreed to while I was in prison for the original six episodes, but the prison confection and then Lifetime came back wanting more episodes, so it goes off of the same original contract. So it's not two different contracts. I'd have one documentary and then they decide what they were gonna do with more episodes. So I want so I want it to be known it's an obligation. So she's basically breaking it down at that point, which I don't know if any of this is true or not, because then again, it's Gypsy Rose. And we know that she hasn't been honest about everything or forthcoming up until this point, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So moving on, um, she said, uh, my stepmom does not want it put out that I have a restraining order against Fancy. She wants us to, she doesn't want it being put out there. Uh, if you say it, then whatever, but I'm on the phone with Christy and she's like, hold back. I told her I'm talking to you. So I said, I meant to ask you that, which is why I didn't say anything. She was like, this is just, uh, this is so you know I'm telling the truth for your eyes and your eyes only. It was Mike Stanfield, which is her 
old attorney. She was basically showing me the screenshots of the Facebook message that she hits. No, the text message that she sent in. Mm -hmm. I said, I actually believe you because I know Fancy's crazy. She said, I know. Um, so fast forward, I realized at that point, she had a friend on Facebook, um, on TikTok. Her name is Brie. She sent the screenshots of the messages between her and I to Brie. So I said to her, you told me that you wanted us to keep this between you and I, which at that point,